Okay, now Merlins. Merlins uh, have often been described by people as basically being tiny cheer falcons, and there's, it's actually quite accurate. Merlins are smaller than Eurasian kestrels, but um, larger than American kestrels. But their their density and their size is, is uh, comparable just to a scaled down cheer falcon. So they are a circumpolar species, which means they live in the northern part of the northern hemisphere. So they, that covers many, many countries. They have a weak malar stripe, similar to the Eurasian kestrel. They just have that one front malar stripe. They're specialist bird hunters, and there's, there's three subspecies in North America. They love the cold, and they only occur in Utah when their food migrates south. And again, I'm mentioning Utah because this PowerPoint I made originally for a uh, presentation at the Great Salt Lake Bird Festival here in Utah. So in other words, they usually um, don't migrate unless their food migrates. So the three subspecies dilemma. Um, we basically have uh, three typically recognized subspecies here in Utah and in North America. So the, they're the Richardson's Merlin, the Columbaris Merlin, and the Suclei. The Richardson's Merlin uh, is the biggest, generally. That nature loves to break rules. It always does. But it's generally the biggest and typically the most pale in coloration. So here's a, here's a very light Richardson's. And this is a male. The one I, you just saw was a female. This is a male, and then once they're one year old, they get the blue wings. The females don't, don't get that blue coloration. The columbaris is uh, typically smaller than the Richardson's, darker than the Richardson's, and hardest to de definitively identify unless it's in the hand. That's because uh, it's kind of an in-between the light and the dark phase. So here's one uh, on a quail that he caught. And here's one in the hand. Very dark bird. Now the Suclei is the Pacific or Coastal Merlin, so we normally think of them as being Alaska, Washington, Oregon, and California. We do get them here in Utah. Uh, they're typically the smallest. They're the darkest worldwide. And jokingly here, they're the scientific fact that it's the coolest Merlin worldwide. I, they're really fun birds. I, I've loved working with Merlins, but the, these black Merlins, uh, I get so excited every time I see one in the wild. Here's one on a kill, caught a quail. Look at the tail. This individual has uh, tail bands so prominent that one would think it was actually a columbaris, not a suclei. But if you look at the secondaries, there's no banding whatsoever, which would suggest that it's a suclei. Now this is a little more typical. You can see for a suclei, it has no banding on the tail whatsoever. So let's do a quick wing comparison on some steady wings. This would be considered a Richardson's. This would be a columbaris. And this would be a light suclei and a darker suclei. Now, why is subspecies identification a problem, especially in Utah and the Intermountain West? Well, they have overlapping ranges. Uh, the subspecies uh, interhybridize, and each egg is fertilized separately. I've talked to biologists who have observed nesting pairs that nest near each other, and the males would bring food to females at different nests, and after the food exchange would, would breed with a female. So in other words, one nest with eggs, each egg could be fertilized by a different father and with different subspecies. Uh, there's a huge variance in color saturation of visible bands. So I always tell people, if you don't know what subspecies it is, that's fine. Just be happy that you've narrowed it down to a Merlin. Oh. Difference in foot size as well. Merlins have huge toes. That's because they are bird hunters, and so they're trying to catch a bird out of the air. Kestrels have very small feet that are thick for their size that are for catching rodents. Now look at these perched profiles. There's the profile and width of a Merlin versus the profile and width of a Kestrel. So they're both broad shouldered, but a Kestrel tapers down very quickly. So if you're looking at a silhouette on a phone pole and you're roughly sure of the size, if it doesn't seem to taper down much, 
it's probably a Merlin. And again, that's the same profile as you would have for a Jeer Falcon, just scaled down. That's the end of part three of this uh, PowerPoint. Check out part four to see the rest of this presentation.